I've never seen anything this beautiful in the entire galaxy. All right, give me the bomb. Okay, folks, it's showtime! Hello, good morning, good evening, good night. We have once more ended the lockdown. Uh, not a very good lockdown this time. Uh, we didn't have as much to put in as we were hoping. Uh, just the two things today, I think. Uh, one is a discussion that me and my fellow co-hosts had about 80s uh, children characters. And it descends into a bit of silliness, but... I thought it was quite a good one, so uh, in it goes. The second thing that we've got for you today in today's lock-in is a... How should I put it? A reason why episode one has never been played. And it's in answer to the question, how hard is it to start podcasting? The answer to that is very hard. So, uh, Yeah. I'll give you those two to have a listen to, and hope you enjoy it. Or is it the past? No, it's definitely the future, because I haven't recorded the intro yet. Oh my is god! It, is it the preaxial Nevertex? No, it's the Nexus Maximus. Well, that, that was... We're not allowed to use that word anymore. Hasbro <laughs> made a boo-boo. <laughs> Safe search off before you do that kind of thing, Hasbro. <laughs> Bobby, 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 I've got Nexus Maximus. So have I, son. Slightly different toys. Look, if I press a button, mine lights up. If I press a button, mine vibrates. Anyhow. <laughs> it's his power punch action. <laughs> Bobby, look, Megatron's fighting Nexus Maximus. Think of that image. Think of it now. <laughs> so, yes, um, we're here for this little section. Because my esteemed co-host, I own, I own, I own, Mr. Chaos Envy, <laughs> mentioned something, and I thought it would make quite a good little discussion topic. topic. Uh, would you like to mention what it was? It was just the uh, the whole idea of um, producers and editors, um, as it were, just deciding all of a sudden that uh, for kids to actually relate to the characters that are being written um, in like you know comics or TV or whatever they decide that they have to have a uh, a child in it mm. um, because the kids won't relate to any of the grown-ups or anything no yeah. um, which yeah. I always found quite odd because even as a kid I remember hating a lot of the the characters that I was supposed to relate to I remember hating Spike as a kid, but I don't find him as annoying now. We just laugh at his stupidity. Hey, I found a tape recorder! <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'll you, Spike. I'll step thing, in I, your I face. Always, I always hated the, the likes of Spike. Because um, I, I just wanted to see the big robots. Spike, what's his face from masking T-Bob? Yes. T-Bob and Scott, Scott yeah. Scott yeah. and T-Bob, I hated them. The they, two kids from they were just position. there as, oh, we're, 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 we're in trouble, oh, we better go rescue him in my car that changes to a plane. Yeah, yeah. The, the little kid in pole position, that was... <laughs> Sorry. I just thought of the twisted toy for eight. <laughs> Mad Tracker presses a button and the seagull wings open up. It's like, Mad Tracker away! Oh, this usually works when I'm on angel dust. <laughs> <laughs> the two policemen there. <laughs> Thanks for opening the doors so we can, like pull you out and beat you and stuff. <laughs> I'm just remembering the robot chicken thing where he pushes T-Bob and Scott out as the weapons to destroy the other cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before the race is won by a headless poncho. Mm. From chips. Um, I am going to say this though, I'm just sitting here thinking, some 80s cartoons didn't have no, no, the kid didn't. element in it. Um, G.I. Joe no, no, instantly kid. sprung to mind. Um, Master of the Universe didn't. Master of the Universe didn't. They kind of had Arco as a comic relief. Yeah, yeah comic relief. He, he wasn't not a kid. Relief, yeah. he w- but he wasn't a kid that you were to sort of identify yeah. with. Jason the Wheeled Warriors didn't. Didn't. There was a small sister in there. But it never felt like she was hammered in there to make kids like her. No. I certainly didn't like her. No. Um, I mean, that, that was the whole idea with uh, Robin in the original Batman comic. Mm. 
uh, it, they thought that um, basically people wouldn't, uh, the kids that were reading the comics weren't identifying with Batman. Yeah. So they had to put in this sort of light-hearted yeah. sort of child in it. And it. It just, it didn't work. I mean, to be honest, the only... <laughs> Why do you think they killed off the second one? I was, I was going to say, <laughs> the only Robin that I have actually liked is um, Tim Drake. Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, Dick Grayson as Nightwing, love him. Yeah, yeah. I think he's really good. Uh, but Tim Tim Drake, just as Robin, it's he's fantastic. Now, I've even read the Robin comics, mm. you know, the stuff that's set with him doing his own thing. Yeah, yeah. And they're really good. Yeah. Well, that's probably a sure I mean, sign of it, because no other Robin got their own comic, surely. Uh, it was just the, fir- the first... No, definitely didn't. The first mm. sort of miniseries, I mean, it was all sort of you know, 15, 16 year old stuff, mm-hmm. you know, in the background, but it, you know, it, it wasn't just kind of like, oh, God, you it's kill the, him. It's the scared. difference between Peter Parker in Ultimate Spider Man and Peter Parker in, um, oh, it wasn't Spider Man Year One, what was it? Lost Chapters, or whatever it was called. Mm. The first time they rebooted Spider Man. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah trying to bring it up to date, mm. which, and it was painful to read, yeah. Yeah, because it was just forced, horrible nastiness yeah. of, this is what it's like being a teen, you're a teen, you like yeah. things that are about being a teen, compared to Ultimate Spider-Man, where Peter Parker, just, it was natural, yeah. it was a natural Because it was a, cause it was a complete character. restart, yeah. but saying that reboot, the reboots and the adjustments sometimes work, the changing Iron Man's origin to Iraq War, from Vietnam War, just jumps it up that 30 years, yeah, yeah. but it you can still kind of say that the in-between things have happened yeah. in a short space of time. Um, well, it's, that's, I mean, rebooting is another thing entirely. Yeah, let's not get it's into reboots. No, um, no. But, but yeah. on, the, on the kid things, it's, it's weird because <laughs> modern cartoons do it and don't do it in some respects. There always seems to be that comic relief character. Yes. Um, but then you've got some shows like, dare I use the words, Mighty Wolf and Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Aimed at a more teenage audience, so hence the heroes were teens. Yeah, yeah. Don't quote me on this because I could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain the Japanese series, where they took all the original fighting sequences from, was probably adults who changed in the ranges. Now I'm not sure um, on this. Not 100. percent No, I, I know. Think I think some they of the were. I think, Rinder stuff. I think they were. They were teens again. Right. Because um, I've seen. I've seen pictures where basically the high school's exactly, almost exactly the same. Jeez. To the high school that the uh, not in every series though. I mean, there is one of them where uh, one of the members was a reanimated corpse. Wow! From the old power, well, not Power Rangers, but the Japanese version. Yeah. Um, J something. It's the one where they're all named after cards. Yeah. And I think it was the Joker was a reanimated corpse. Yeah. Well, the I um, seem to remember a, ham- a cybernetic hamster. <laughs> there was. Uh, I might be wrong. In the in the original one, well, what we. No, the original yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure there was a couple of series before that in Japan. More than a few, yes. Um, but the in that one, uh, I did see um, a couple of images of uh, basically they stood next to the lockers, mm-hmm. sort of thing, and it almost looked exactly the Jeez. same to the oh, okay. the American yeah. one. And uh, I just found it really funny because the uh, the guy who was the Yellow Ranger had a hairnet on. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that uh, the guy is the Yellow yeah. Ranger. Oh, uh, everybody kind of glossed over that when they read it. Oh, we need another woman in there. Just Ooh. thinking, oh, the fact the pink one has a skirt. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. do we'll go back. Back to the 80s for a, a quick minute. Um, Thundercats. Hmm. Thundercats had Wily Kit and Wily Cat, but they yeah. never felt like the no. Connect 2 character. No, they were, they were never pushed as sort of a main sort of thing. Um, I mean, you could argue the fact that Lionel himself was a kid because yeah, he was supposed to be a kid... In, in an adult's body, body yeah. which uh, it, it was a v- quite a good um, storytelling device because he had to learn yeah. things whilst being the big awesome dude. Yeah, but he never so he seemed to mature very very quickly. Yes. although he had to learn things, he never really acted like a kid. No, mm. and I think that that's a very clever way of doing it. Mm. You've got the character for the kids to connect to, so to speak. Yeah, um, I say so to speak because I never connected to. Spike, I never nah. connected to Scott and T-Bob. Never connected to any of those characters. Nah. I mean, um, in Transformers, I, rem- I remember distinctly the one character to start with that I felt a strong connection to was Hound. Hmm. And that was purely because was Livia out in charge of oh yeah. a friend of my dad's had a big green Bing. Jeep. jeep. Ah! So that Jeep, in my mind, because I knew that Jeep, yeah. 
Hound that turned into a big green jeep, yeah. connected to the character. Weird. So it's it's a strange one, um, and I do think that the people who make these cartoons have got the complete wrong end of the stick. Mm-hmm. Kids aren't watching them. But look at Reboot, right? a series that I say is for everyone. Yeah, I mean it's I've still not seen. Hint, cool. hint, hint. hint. <laughs> I'll do something to allow you to see it in this country. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm. um, you had the small character of Enzo. Yeah. But Enzo wasn't there to connect to the kids. Enzo was there to be an annoying little git who eventually became mega awesome. I don't know, I, I actually see him as a... Uh, a thing for put in there for the kids to connect to. I just think he worked on different levels. Mm. It could be. I mean, I remember watching it the first time round, and it always seemed to be you saw everything through Bob's eyes because mm. Bob was the visited, so to speak, to mainframe. Yeah. yeah. So everything went through his eyes. Whilst Enzo knew everything, where everything was, mm. and just went on adventures every now and again. See, just because we've gone down the reboot path, I mean, we've, you know, obviously this is going to the 90s now. Base Wars. Mm-hmm. First series, you kind of feel like Cheetos is the one that everybody's supposed to like. Yes. He was the kid he aimed on and then kind of matured and sort of went away from it. Yeah. When they realised they had a better storyline than that. Um, <laughs> and then didn't go anywhere near that with Beast Machine. Yeah. But then that series is so morbid, it might as well <laughs> wear back makeup and take photos of itself pretending to cut its wrists on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to say that if um, if Beast Wars had a uh, MySpace page, it would have obligatory black and white photos? Yeah, for its Beast Machines first. <laughs> it's well. Beast Machines emo brother. Uh, oh, I hate my life that much. Oh. But then again, say that there's two season, two series, sorry, that don't have any human characters in whatsoever. Mm. That can be, well, not even human characters. They don't actually have any characters that can be classified as the kids. Granted, yeah. Cheeto's the young one. Yeah. Yeah. But even so. And obviously, season three of Beast Wars, you've got the two monkey eight people. Yeah. But we can forgive them for the comedy value of. Oh, oh whatever! <laughs> <laughs> no, we put it there. No, it, oh, whatever. Yeah, we can forgive them for that. A scene the first time I saw that made me cry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, anything else you'd like to add to that? I'm just thinking, with sort of modern cartoons. It doesn't feel like there's as no, much the, of a the, uh, pity connection, is I it? I don't know, for a lot of modern cartoons, well, the stuff that I'd watch, uh, they just, they don't seem to bother with that anymore. I think those sort of cartoons, they've, they've kind of got over it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, You've got to remember them. In the 80s, we're talking about a time where, thanks to what I can only class as Reaganonics, thanks Reagan, um, I think it was actually during Reagan's presidency that the entire thing got overturned where companies were allowed to have a cartoon series based on the property. Mm. Uh, I mean, Hot Wheels tried it in the 70s and got the hell sued out of it. Yeah. Um, but it was the early 80s that allowed companies to go, right, here's our property, here's the toys we're putting out, mm. don't make a 20-minute episode. Yeah, um, that's blatantly what Transformers are. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a 20-minute yeah. yeah. advert. That's all yeah. it is. Um, granted, 20-minute advert that had War Dawn in it. Yeah, <laughs> but but it is a 20 minute yeah. advert, that's entirely what it was made to do, so at that point they're still quite, they haven't perfected it yet. Mm. Yeah. You move into the 90s and a lot of, you still have bits of it, but it's a lot more perfected and you have more, um, I don't want to say intelligent writers, because that's I, I think, I think, uh, I it, think It's going do. different ways. I think you do, because it, uh, I mean if you're... If you think about, if you're just going purely on the, um, purely on like the the lines of, say, Transformers and He-Man mm-hmm. sort of thing, then you basically they had sort of the 20 minute advert they wanted to put out. Yeah. It's like right this week we want to showcase this toy, this toy, this mm. toy, and this toy. Mm-hmm. And it was like right, um, how do we put it all together? All right. Um, throw some humans in there so we can make some sort of story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, based on the usual kids' crap that's around. Mm-hmm. I mean, He-Man especially. I mm-hmm. I went back. I loved that show. And I actually went back and watched some. And it's dear s- God, it was painful. There, I there was, yeah, am going to next agree. To no story. No. no. But don't the backgrounds look gorgeous? The backgrounds. No. I, I I'm, I'm, I'm completely serious here. The backgrounds. <laughs> I love the, the backgrounds, backgrounds for He-Man. And the 
the stock animation footage. Running, 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 magic jump! Yeah. yeah. They, I mean, you, you make fun of it because they use it in every episode. Yeah, yeah. but it is but beautifully done. But that was beautifully done. animated. Yeah. Yeah. It, you can't fault them well, for their animation. No, 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 definitely not. You know, it's the running, it's not not just the running slightly off camera, running, running, magic jump, but even the stock motion of He-Man just running is yeah. really, really nice. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. But they, they basically they they've done those few perfect bits, and then you know they they just sent it to some trailer for <laughs> some guy <laughs> to do the rest of the episode just to plug this one character. Yeah, and it was just um, you know it's painful watching it and. I think what it is is, you know, they, they'd obviously written like a, a paragraph or something like that of this is the character's backstory. Yep, mm. yep. Write something about this. And yep. some poor writer's been sat there going, ah, what do I do? And um, then over the time of the kids growing up, yep. you you know, this whole sort of mythology. background and mythology has mm. grown and become its own sort of universe mm -hmm. where... You know, the kids who watched it have grown up, become writers or whatever themselves, and kind of gone, you know what, I could do something really good with this. Yeah. Yeah. I, think I, I, I think that's oh looking at the 2002, is it 2002? 2002 he yeah. remake. Yeah. That's why that was so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it failed on its ass, which is a massive shame. Yeah. Because it was so good. Because, yeah. it got, because it got jumped from place to place to place. It's what I call the American Gothic syndrome yeah, yeah, yeah. where they don't have any faith in something and just bounce it from place to place to place and then, and then no one but watches generally it. it's because it's something that damn good american gothic yeah. um, yeah. yeah space above and beyond yeah there's yeah. another one exactly the same they thing happened they can't take the fact that it's that good they have to mess it up <laughs> it's no faith in it because it's something different and mm. then they go and make another you got to think seasons of stargate sg1 you got to think though <laughs> the, uh, when he-man 2002 came out what was coming out at the time? Yeah, the Turtles series. So that's why He-Man 2002 happened, because there was a massive nostalgia wave, mm -hmm. which seems to have ebbed a little bit now. Yeah, yeah. which I'm uh, kind of thankful for. Mm -hmm. Me too, actually. Um, yeah. All nostalgia dogs. I, I I prefer to be the nostalgic guy in conversations. <laughs> um, but at the other time, the other point, you had very safe programming in 2002. Mm. Um, after it sounds weird, but after 9/11, if you look at what happened to kids' TV, not long after, mm. it very, very, it got very dumbed down. It got very. Mm. Uh, it was a good couple of years before it came out of that. But then, of course, yeah. you got the Turtle series and the He-Man series. Yeah, and then they realised a couple of years later that the Turtle series was very dark and gritty and turned it to Turtles Flash Forward. Ugh. Yikes! <laughs> But and then t and then brought it back and then you d it's the stupidest thing I saw an episode and I hate it because they've got their eyes. Oh yeah, they've kept the designs from Flash Forward and then yeah, brought it back kept to the sewer. The, but they've p given them eyes. Yeah. I know it's stupid, but the fact they have eyes looks crap. I prefer yeah. those white lenses. Yeah, it it destroys the entire yeah. design of them yeah. because you're now focused on these massive, great, big Disney eyes mm -hmm. sticking out and it just ah. From what I've seen, I'm not a fan of it. No, no, back to the sewer was bloody awful. Mm. Um, Although I have to say, um, oh yeah, and they kept going on the internet to fight people. Yeah. So right. talking about um, kids TV shows, just to go completely off topic. I think we've already done that. Yeah, that's what yeah. we do. Oh yeah. This is a bit more though. I was uh, round at uh, my mate's house. My mate's got two little girls, mm -hmm. and um, basically we're just having a crack in that, um, flicking channels and stuff, and he went. He suddenly. Uh, Clicked on something and said, "Oh, I've got to show you this. It's, it's the scariest thing ever." I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, obviously, with having two little girls and all the programming they watch, mm -hmm. they're into Hannah Montana. Mm -hmm. And he put up on YouTube the it's it was like a thing of the best bits of the brother in the series. Right. And he was showing me it, and um, he said that um, the guy that plays the brother. Yeah, who looks, you know, classic uh, American, American Disney casting. Yeah, you know, um, grown in a Disney fat tube. Someone to <laughs> yeah, someone who's uh, supposed to be Zac like Efron. Twelve, thirteen, whatever is actually sixteen, seventeen, yeah. eighteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thirty-two. But Jesus, get the hell out! Apparently, that's kind of creepy, actually. Because yeah, that's what Paul said. He said it is so creepy. Because mm. he's he's 32 and he doesn't look it yeah. at all. You c 
could not tell he was that age, but he said that he actually went and checked on um, sort of internet movie database to actually yeah. see what else he'd done. And he said apparently he has had quite a career of doing like Bef. little things. And it's just like, what? I still think he was lying to me. Yeah. But he, him and him and his missus just swear down dead that that's right. And he was just like, <gasps> so freaky. That's fucked up, man. Mm. Weird. Attempting to branch back on the topic, mm -hmm. um, I feel you notice how a lot of modern cartoons now don't have the kitty wink thing. Yep. Is that a direct thing of them growing people who are script writers now growing up as kids going, "Don't take that tape player in, you dumb fuck." Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, Transformers animated superstar Derek J. Wyatt. We love you. We'll see you at Auto Assembly. Oh yes, we will. Uh, sir, I will, I will, sir, I will be buying you drink. I will be the one um, guarding you from these two humping your legs. Well, I won't help. No, you. no, no. I, I. Gary Chalk is there for me to hump. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Watchmen. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm not saying who I'm going to hump. Um, we all know who you're going to hump. Well, I'm sharing a room with Stu, sir. Bingo. Nick Roche! <laughs> I'm not sharing a room with Nick Roche. No, but you're going to try and invite him back to that room. Of course I am. Uh, <laughs> lock him in there like a pair of motherfucking Japanese finger cuffs. <laughs> oh. I, I was more meaning, ask him nicely if you'd like to join uh, me and my esteemed hosts for some recording talking. And some beers. And some beers. Oh, beers. <laughs> Must remember this time, do not spend toy money on beer. But yeah, it's um, gonna happen. <laughs> that's why I this time I'm taking three envelopes: toy money, beer money, food money. Wow. Because I don't know if I can even take one envelope. <laughs> the uh, the toy money will be about this thick, the beer money will be about this thick, and the food money will be uh, that thick. Well, for food. those who can't see uh, <laughs> Rob's fingers, <laughs> toy money was pretty average, Boo, booze money was really big, and food money was tiny. <laughs> food food money was one note. <laughs> what are you trying to say? That was last year, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. I Only fluids, the doctor said. <laughs> oh, Birmingham water is disgusting. <laughs> Especially I don't think I'll be drinking tap water while I'm down there. That's, no. that's why you want uh, Guinness. Because it's a meal in Christ. itself. Although, although, I did find the greatest ever place to get a takeaway burger. Yeah. Mm. There's a little guy selling burgers. It was gorgeous. Perfect hangover food. Half an hour I was fit and fighting. But anyhow, um... So yeah, I think, uh, as an overall, the idea of making a kid character to connect to the kids doesn't work. No. no. It's never worked, and it's something that I think, I'm afraid, we're just going to have to live with. Yeah. Um, what yeah. I was trying to say before was, I think it was Derek J. White. I'm actually starting to wonder if it was or not. I'd have to check it and come back. Um, they'd say that whilst watching this stuff as a kid, it always annoyed them. Mm. So... Cat in the back. What? <laughs> Stu's just opened up a bag and a cat went into it. Uh, right, okay. Which is, ah, she realises I've got it. Carry on with your comment. So, uh, with we that, I think we'll draw this to a screeching halt. Um, <coughs> but before we go, I just want to quickly make my second uh, psychic guess for the day, for the year ahead. One, Botcon is going to have a Metal Hawk stroke Hawk figure in its sets somewhere. What? That's my psychic guess. Two, the company that makes Transformers Prime, or whatever it's going to be called, will be called Rainmaker. Okay. Rainmaker's currently what Mainframe was. Oh. And they're coming back with Reboot later on this year. Yay. And Mainframe... Warning. Incoming game. And Mainframe made Beast Wars. Yeah, I know so, that. So, that's my, that's my guess. Rainmaker are going to do Transformers I hope you're right. Prime, or whatever it's actually going to be called. So, with that, I think we're going to move on to an earlier recording. Um, just in case you ever wonder how difficult it is for us to get started on making, <laughs> on the recording, these things. We're going to play out now with 15 minutes of utter nonsense. Yeah, this is a grand example of why episode one never happened. Episode one is three hours of this. It's I I'd actu I actually disagree with you. I <laughs> think that this segment that you're about to play is exactly what they meant by occasionally insightful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think all three of us to get onto this need to make transition sounds. 
Oh, good evening, good morning, good night. I'm the goddamn Batman. Do you want to be the goddamn Batman too? Who else wants to be the goddamned Batman? I hate you. I'm the goddamn Batman. I love being the goddamn Batman. I'm gonna kill you. I really am. I've got a dragon tattoo on my back. I must be the goddamn Batman. The 50-year-old butt was built like a strong man. I must be the goddamn Batman. I kidnap small boys. I must be the goddamn Batman. And what no one can see is the fact that Adam is shaking so violently he has most has definitely soiled himself. Yeah. Oh yes. Smell of justice. I'm the goddamn Batman. So, apart from me being the goddamn Batman, you are once again entering the old oil house for part utterly, utterly terrified. Three of the Shun discussion. See what I did there? It rhymed. It rhymed and everything. I am Grufflock. I am your host. With me today is... Chaos Envy. The goddamn Batman. And next to him... It's me, it's Stu. It's Dark Ages. Not the goddamn Batman either. No. Oh, okay. Y you can come back. It's alright. It's fine. I'm just gonna leave the room now because I'm kind of scared. I'm the goddamn Spider-Man. Stop it. Okay. Or I'll so, get yes. the lightsaber again. <laughs> The lightsaber or the meat saber? Lightsaber. Oh, meat saber right. doesn't exist. Plus, it might be a penis. <laughs> <laughs> might be a penis. Might be a penis. So, how are you two today? <laughs> do you really need to ask after that intro? Yes. Yes, I do. I want to know. I want to know how you are today. Tell me. Tell me everything. I was fine until your intro. Yeah? Then me you too. brought back all the horrid memories of actually reading that garbage. I hate Grant Morrison. <laughs> Everyone hates Grant Morrison. Why does Grant Morrison keep getting work? In fact, screw Escalation. I want to have a three-hour discussion on why Grant Morrison gets work. Well, I because haven't people, read any of his stuff, so I'm People gonna... haven't actually read the stuff he's done recently. All they've read is the good stuff he did when he was writing for the Justice League. Justice League right the way up to Rock of Ages. Yes. Then it just goes downhill. Then Beast is gay. And then a cat. Possibly not in that order. Don't, don't start with the second mutations. That was just... That was just... Oh, blur. look, it, it's Magneto! No, it's not. I hate Morrison. But he was good. He did Justice League in Animal Man. And I don't understand. As much as I could rant on about Grant Morrison for quite some time, I'm not going to. No, because we're here to talk about a comic we do actually like. Yes, it's devastation today. But before we get to that, I just want to say a couple of things. First up, I've got a shout out for Tricky. Hi, Tricky. Hey, hi, hi, hi. Just because just Tricky likes the shout out. So okay. <laughs> keep, keeping Tricky happy. You gotta keep Tricky happy. You gotta keep the Tricky happy. If you don't keep Tricky happy, Tricky don't trick no more. That would make me a sad panda. <laughs> <laughs> if I was any of the aforementioned people, I would have uh, filed an official complaint with the old oil house complaints department. That's me. Um, it generally involves me sitting behind the counter going, fuck off. Because <laughs> you're the goddamn stew. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a goddamn anything. I'm just a stew. Alright. Okay. I, would, I would like to uh, say one thing. I found out this week that uh, they are trying to reboot the Crow franchise. <laughs> they are trying to remake the original Crow, so, you know, everyone, begin to fear now. They're rebooting Spider-Man and Daredevil films, so why not? Spider-Man's getting a reboot. Yeah, already. It's, yeah. it's barely been five minutes since the third one came out and ruined our lives. Um, well, no, you can well, understand. It's almost, almost ten years since the first one came out. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's nothing. Daredevil's getting a reboot. Daredevil, the mm, yeah, crow. fair enough. Yeah. How can they try and remake the crow? Badly. They did. I believe it was called the Crow Two and Crow Three, or whatever <laughs> horrid, horrid name they put on it. You f you're missing Crow Four. Oh. Let's starring forget. David Boreanaz. Oh. Let's not forget the Crow TV series. They did a TV series. I'm going to punch you <laughs> so hard in the face. The TV no. Series. He gets oh, he gets fun. a day job as a bouncer. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm oh, really not kidding. It's absolutely crap. terrible. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. I like to call him Derek Craven, the pigeon. Oh, it's awful. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, the, they're apparently um, going to remake it, and all I have going through my head is the fact that it's going to be emo. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be a big fucking they, They're going to miss the whole sort of, you know, gothic masterpiece thing and just make it emo. It's not a gothic masterpiece. It's a very pretty film, and I love The Crow to bits. It, but it's far too pretentious for its own. Oh, yeah, it's a gothic masterpiece. That's what you mean. 
Bash the devil stood. <laughs> no, it's the, this is the really real world. There ain't no coming back. No, no. There ain't no coming back. No, hey, it's kicked in. It's kicked in, man. It's kicked in. Happy <laughs> hush. The best bit of that film just has to be the. Got a quick impression for you. Car, car, bang, fuck him dead. No, no. The Still best bit of it. the best bit of that <laughs> film is the way that a joke gets completely ruined by um, Fun Boy. Well, you got you have Eric walking through the the room getting shot at. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ walks into a bar and hands the innkeeper three nails, and then he says, "Don't you ever fucking die!" <laughs> Could you keep me up for the night? <laughs> Where's Fun Boy? Promised to bang the way I done it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that film. <laughs> there's a there's a future round table, I think, if not commentary track. I think commentary, because all the round table would be would just be us sitting there and just quoting oh, actually, it. Yeah, every two minutes you just go, Fire it up! Fire it up! You could do the comic as well. Ah, I know like, nothing's of the comic. I will oh. loan you it. Awesome But you are only loaning the much loved one. You touch okay. my Sunday best one and I kill you. Okay. <coughs> I never spazzed out when you only lent me chunks of Ultimate Spider-Man, which was still awesome. <laughs> Remember, there's a f from the haircut police. There's a fifty dollar <laughs> fine for ball cuts. <laughs> I like my hair. <laughs> I wrote these down so I wouldn't forget. I had some important things to say. <laughs> when you cut yourself shaving, marshmallow club comes out. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, just for tough crowd. When you back up, we all hear a beeping sound. <laughs> Uh, not in a not in a long time have I laughed out loud at a uh, actual comic joke. No, it's but Ultimate, Ultimate Spider-Man Spider kept hitting me with it in the yeah. first few volumes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bendis. Yeah, for about the first fifty issues, Ultimate Spider-Man yeah. was just top then notch. Venom shows up and just goes. Nyaaah! Well, unfortunately, Venom showing up and me stopping buying it, the two aren't connected. Mm. But that roughly about the same time. I was being time. a Venom fan. I was disappointed. I like the backstory. I, I like the basis. It's a nice, uh, nice way of getting around it. It's from space. Yes, it's an alien. Like Unlike that, Spider-Man like Three, which is look, look, it's from space. Look, yeah. it's an alien. No, no explanation. You don't need to know any more than that. Dear Sam Remy, when you say I hate Venom, I will never put him in my film. Then all of a sudden you're going, I really like Venom. I'm putting him in my film. We know you're not. We know you're being forced into it by the money makers. <laughs> just, I don't blame him. No. I right. just think he did a half ass job on a character that he hates. I don't even, think, I don't even think it's that, to be honest. When it comes to Sam Raimi and the entirety of Spider-Man 3, that's a film made by committee. <laughs> that was Sam Raimi trying desperately to make... You can see it. There hmm. are bits of pure Raimi in there. Sandman. Sandman's creation. Hmm. And um, or whatever his name... I can't remember his name now. Christian Tobus. Christian Tobus. The guy that played Sandman. All right. Um, I can't remember the actor's name. He just the way that he it's pure Rami the way mm. he's got him emoting it. Oh, that's cool. Until the end where it's like I'm a big monster guy. No. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Spider-Man free run for another time I think. Mm, after my Grant Morrison. <laughs> this week on Rant Oil House. <laughs> God damn you, Morrison! Should we, should we start this one off again? You can just use that other stuff for locking. <laughs> no, 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 we'll just get started. Have you seen Matty Collector yet? No. <laughs> oh, God. What? Mattel's um, fan ba uh, uh, fan community. Oh, so like Transformers Collectors Club. Yeah. But for He-Man. Yeah. Have you seen anything of this? Um, the only stuff I've seen recently for Masters of the Universe is the awesome DC versus Masters of the Universe figures. <laughs> so you've got He-Man beating the shit out of Superman and Lex Luthor and Skeletor button heads. Um, and also the fantastic robot chicken inspired Skeletor and his dentist double pack, <laughs> which strangely I really kind of want. <laughs> I have to admit, I haven't seen these. All I'm going to say is, oh boys, to, to my fellow hosts and to anybody out there listening, go and look up Matty Collector. Just go and have a look at what people have said about uh, mm. their um, certain brand of uh, consumer greatness. Could be worth a look. Um, also worth oh, mentioning. Good. This is something that I just... I read about this on uh, a certain webcomics blog. I think he gets enough plugs as it is. Um, basically, they're doing... I don't know if anybody remembers the old T-Man on Skeletor where they had the battle chests. Oh, they yeah. They hit yeah. it and it would spin yeah. around and yeah. the damage would come. They, yeah. instead of redoing this spinning mechanism, they somehow have lost the technology to still make it, so it's now three replaceable chess pieces that yeah. you take out and put in whichever chess piece you want. Yeah. Now, am I the only one that kind of thinks that takes the fun out of the gimmick? 
Yeah. The idea was you go, ching, and he goes, oh, I've been hit, and his chest spins, and his chest's all damaged. Oh, my chest armor's all damaged. Clang, oh, I've been hit again, spin. Oh, it's even more damaged. That was my second favourite He-Man figure that I owned. My first being the Thunder Clash. I think it was Thunder Clash Thunder He-Man. Punch. Thunder Punch He-Man. Yes. That thing was brilliant. <laughs> I love the fact that after he'd done his little punch, smoke emanated from every single part what? of his... He, you put caps in ah, his back, right. and then you pulled his arm back, and he, when he punched, it did the caps. <laughs> they did all the caps at once. <laughs> Mine didn't. Mine did. I put some. Wow, so, you were a fire hazard as a toy. Oh, this thing could have killed a small child or hippo. It did, <laughs> did the punch, and then around the neck, from both arms and from the back, smoke would emanate <laughs> completely and utterly, oh, that's losing awesome. any face or head or arm. It was just... It was just this torso with smoke coming out of it. And I just always remember thinking, I punch harder than the speed of sound. <laughs> I now have this idea of it being something that he's worked on, but it doesn't go right, so it explodes on him. <laughs> <laughs> like, my yep. arms has gone, hey, check out this punch thing I've built for you. Give it a whirl. <laughs> Comes in burning. Yeah, it needs a bit more work, Manny. A um, little bit more work. A lot of burning issues. No, I just want you to think about this, though. No. So I've had this in my head since I was about six, okay? Why do you think I f- the first thing I thought of was when I saw Guyver at the age of 13? Where, all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> All I can think of, he's running on caps! <laughs> on the caps at his back, I've got off at once. It made Because I've got a faulty one. It made watching the Guyver anime the first time round <laughs> quite difficult. <laughs> all but I can think of was the uh, Neutronics movie. Oh, and I uh, love that movie. And, and Mark Hamill churching into a weird slug thing. <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen that in years. Oh, just Mark Hamill saying the lines, I'm going to get enough rope to hang myself. <laughs> wow, that you've wasn't really gone downhill. That wasn't in Mutronics. That was the end of Star Wars 3. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Mr. Hamill, we love your voice work. We really do. Maybe you shouldn't do the acting as much. I like his acting. He was in Wing Commander something. I can't remember which one it, it was. was, it was no, we're we're never going to get to the point, are we? No. Hmm? He was in the Flash he was, he was the trickster and he was using the Joker voice. Mm. That was bizarre. And he was the gr- he would have been the greatest Joker ever at that point. Yeah. Mm. He was, he obviously, he did the similar voice with Cockknocker as well in Jane Santa Bob. Yes. Now, right. there's a phrase I never thought I'd use on the thing. As Cockknocker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad that there was only one S in there. Because otherwise it would have been Ass Cockknocker. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> Oh, I think we should just edit this bit out and start a new thing and just... It's an interesting story, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting story. Avenge me! Dude, we've got like 20 minutes worth of lock-in stuff right there. I think think we should get to the main show. (laughs) Edit! Cut! Fine.